I feel is one of the most important concepts uh, when building applications like in the real world. So uh, besides the actual code you write itself. So until now like whatever companies that I have worked in uh, and I'm 99% sure like most of the big apps that you use like Swiggy or Zomato or Ola or anything, they'll be using they'll be using the concepts here in some form or the other. So uh, like this is one of the this is one of the main things and uh, like I, I was talking to Akshay before I just asked like you know uh, what is something that you may not have learned that much uh, in college. So uh, you mentioned the student system was so one of the topics. So <coughs> I'll be I'll be talking about this today. And uh, one one thing I, I won't be mentioning computers at all until maybe the last uh, two or three slides. Right, so this, this is going to be like something a little bit different. Cool. So uh, I'll I'll start with the with the problem, and then we'll we'll see how to solve it like one by one. Right. So uh, the problem is like we're trying to open a new shop. Right. So uh, I, I need someone's name. Uh, uh, what, what is your name? Okay, so Arjun wants to open his new shop, and he like yeah he'll sell he'll sell a few items right. Uh, that's his shop, and he's selling uh, cherries, and he's selling apples, and he's selling some broccoli. And uh, one thing that's very important is he wants to he wants to note down like uh, of course when you're opening a shop you have to note down everything you sold, all the transactions you made. You have to note that down right. So uh, we, we don't have any computers. You can imagine the shop was opened like uh, maybe 50, 60 years back. That time we didn't really have computers for this. So he's going to be basically using a, a simple notepad to to make note of all the transactions, right? So this this is basically this is where we start from, and it's it's kind of a small shop at this point, right? But uh, there, there's a problem. So the the notebook is not very good quality. You know, sometimes like it it tears easily, or uh, maybe Arjun misplaced the notebook. He lost it. Someone came and stole it. Uh, you know, it, it fell inside some water. And everything got smudged. You know, a lot of things can happen, and uh, a lot of things can happen, and this notebook will kind of get destroyed. But uh, but we still need we still need all our information. We need to know. We need to know about the transactions, right? Otherwise, uh, otherwise most of our money is gone. When we're not, when we don't know what is sold, uh, we don't know how much money we made. That's bad. So what we want to do is we want to make sure, uh, but we can't do anything about losing the note note back, right? Many things can happen. It's an uncertain world, right? So we we can lose it very easily. So note notepad is not good quality. We're not living in uh, that. Uh, our neighborhood is not very secure, so. Right, so basically, we want to uh, we want to make sure we don't lose the data. Basically, yeah. So uh, I want to ask a question if anyone uh, wants to answer. So, uh, how do you think and what do you think we can do about this right now? So multiple copies, multiple copies. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We can we can make multiple copies. Yeah, Right, so this is the simplest thing we can do. Right, if you uh, if you if one notebook might get lost, just make another copy. You know, keep the copy somewhere else. And if one notebook gets lost, you will you will always have you always have the other notebook as backup. Right. But now, like again, this one will also this one also might get lost. Right. So now now what can we do? Yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can make three copies. Yeah, nice. So, uh, so this this is a this is one of the popular concepts in distributed systems. It's called it's called fault tolerance. So e even if we have three copies, all three copies can also get destroyed. I mean, that's fine. Like we will never uh, have one hundred percent chance that everything will always stay, right? But uh, what we can do is. If we have enough copies, 
then we'll make sure like the chance of losing all the copies is like very very small, right? So uh, this is a this is a term we call fault tolerance. So for example, if if we have three copies, our fault tolerance is two. That means uh, we can lose we can lose two copies, but we'll we'll be fine. Our our data still exists and we can still run our shop uh, pretty well. And uh, I mean, one one fun note like uh, when when working in a company, uh, we have we have this term fault tolerance for your team as well. So if you have a team of, uh, so basically you define it as fault tolerance of a team it means how many members of your team, uh, how many members of your team can leave the company, and your team will still be fine. Like everyone knows how to run this. Team, right? So cool. So yeah, I, we can say you know we can make how many of copies we want, but you know every every nothing is free in life, right? So what do you think are some like what are the problems you can face? Uh, what do you guys think are some of the problems you can face when we try to make copies? Storage. <coughs> Sorry. Storage. Storage. Yeah, I mean storage is one issue like. We have to we have to keep three notebooks. Earlier we had only one. We have to keep three notebooks. Notebooks are maybe not uh, that cheap. We'll have to buy extra notebooks just for the same thing. Uh, in, anything else? I think yeah. So cost. yes. So yeah, cost. I mean, cost again is the same as like we have to buy new notebooks. Uh, and yeah, one is it's it's time consuming. Like nobody really wants to spend the time to to make copies every time, right? So yeah, more time required to make copies, and uh, more resources uh, or notepads required. And uh, one more thing is there there will be there will be some lag between uh, by lag I mean it it will not be instantaneous. Like you first write down your transactions in one notebook, and then. You you have to copy it to the other notebooks yourself, right? So that takes some time. So there's so for example, if I see the second note, if if, uh, if maybe my co-owner comes and sees the second notebook, it's not necessary that they be seeing the live data because they have to wait for me to copy it onto the second notebook, right? So these are uh, I would say these are some of like basically it's not free to have a second notebook, but we protect our data. So there's some uh, there's some trade-offs we can make now. So there's no there's there's multiple ways I would say in which we can copy uh, copy our uh, transactions from one book to the other book. So the first one is uh, optimizing for consistency. So consistency means that uh, that what I said right, if my co-owner sees the second notebook. Uh, he should be sure, or she should be sure that the data on the second notebook will be the same as the data on the first notebook. Like it should not be like he'll he, they'll see the second notebook and uh, maybe some transactions are not written down there. So how uh, how how can we make sure of this? Like how, how can we make sure both the notepad notebooks are like for every transaction you you want to make sure that both the notebooks are have the same data. Uh, how how can you do that? Sorry. No, no, it's fine. Sorry. Yeah, take the Xerox, have but the like, sorry. So the I mean the Xerox thing. So we have to make sure after every transaction, both the notebooks have to be the same. And like these people come and buy goods from a shop like every couple of minutes, right? So you can't always go and take the Xerox. Carbon copy. Ah, yeah. Actually, I was thinking like I, I was thinking why someone else said carbon copy. Yeah, yeah we can have carbon copy, but like our our first problem remains the same. It's the same notebook. We can, we can have the carbon paper, but it's the same notebook, right? Same problem. Someone might steal it, it might fall in water. So. Yeah. Yeah, you can use someone else, but like okay, basically we have to like people are coming and buying things every couple of minutes. 
and every time even one thing even if one thing is bought then we make a receipt right so even in between at any point in time you have to make sure that a second notebook and it's a separate notebook like we have to keep separate notebooks because one might catch up fire right so we have to make sure they are the same copies so you can take photos yeah you can you can take photos so actually it's not about uh, it's less about what you do but more about when you do it right so uh, i can say something like for every single like there's a line of uh, customers buying uh, buying groceries as soon as i write down their bill uh, before the next customer comes as soon as i write down the bill i'll make the copy in the next notebook as well right so it's okay if there's a line of customers who come it's fine i'll be this customer is billing i'll tell the other customers you, you wait i have to copy this i have to copy this guy's bill to my other notebook and then only you'll come right but this this makes sure that both our notebooks will always be consistent right so yeah copy each entry as and when it's made so if like if you want to go to the extreme then what we can do is for each item of the customer also like if they bought one tomato you can write down tomato here and then, and then write down tomato here and then only move on to the next item right so if you want to go to go to the extreme you can do that but of course so this will this will take time like this is not convenient for our customers every time uh, every time a customer comes and makes a bill it will take double the time to to bill them uh, until the next customer comes right so this is maybe maybe it's not the best experience for our customers Let, let's see so uh yeah this was not the best experience for customers they have to wait a lot of time so how can is there anything i can do better if i say okay i don't want i don't want consistency anymore it's not necessary that uh, that both my notebooks have to be in sync at all times how how can i improve the experience for a customer okay. like right so update every 10 customers Yeah, yeah, that's a good, that's a good solution. Every like every ten customers, or like during my lunch break or something, I'll go take the notebooks. Or or, or as she said, uh, I can just take a Xerox at the end of the day and then uh, paste it to my second notebook, right? So if if I do this, then I'll I'll reduce I'll reduce the wait time for my customers. The copy uh, copy all entries eventually. So. Uh, the the concept this is this is one of the concepts in distributed systems called eventual consistency means eventually both both my notebooks will be consistent but uh, not not like at this exact point in time right so customer only waits for you to enter in the main notebook and then you can move on to the next customer but of course the disadvantage here is the notebooks my will not always be up to date you you'll have to you'll have to tell your co-owner like you may not always see uh, all the all the transactions but you'll you'll see it like at the end of the day but but not live right so okay you know you're, you're telling that each 10 customers when you write it like how do you know that it won't take like say that i write it after each customer and i sum those up for 10 will it take the same time as waiting for 10 and then uh but but we don't want the sum we want i mean we want every we want every box like okay, so like like my owner wants to see how many tomato how many broccoli how many cherries are sold they want to customer to wait that much of thing yeah customer i mean if that, that's the trade off right? we want uh if we want if we want to be like customers have to wait yeah actually i'll i'll pause here if anyone has any other questions Okay, so uh, which which one is which one is better? Which one do you think? Okay, how how many of you all think uh, consistency is better? Okay, uh, why? And then yeah, but like customers have to wait, right? 
Okay, so everyone else thinks availability is uh, like the second option is better to take Xerox and then Okay, but then uh, but then what if uh, what if someone wants to see like what if uh, some some tax auditor comes and he's like and he sees some transactions on the screen. So uh, so this, this is actually a trick question. There's there's no correct answer for this. And uh, in fact, there's uh, this is one of the problems which can never be solved. Like theoretically, they can never be solved. Uh, even even in even when you're using real-world systems, you can only choose one. You can either choose consistency or availability. So uh, th this is called uh, this is called cap. This is called cap theorem. I mean, you don't have to remember. I'll, I'll, I'll attach all the links in my slides after this. But this is called cap theorem. Basically, it says you can only have consistency, or you can have availability, but you can you can never have both. Right. So, yeah. So now back to my question: Which is better? Uh, that that depends, uh, and that depends on what what you are using it for. So, okay. Say, say uh, instead of a shop, maybe if you're a bank, or maybe you're uh, in, into accounting, or some critical like, uh, or each each transaction like is worth a lot of money, okay? or it's, it's very important that you note it down. Then I would say consistency is better. Like, uh, like if, if you're working in a bank, like it's okay if the customers wait. You, you have to make sure like. You, you have to ensure that the data is correct on, on each copy. Right? So you see that that's why the lines in banks are, are this long. Not really, but yeah. Uh, so for for critical applications, if if you if you want to if if each if each transaction is very valuable, then it would be better to optimize for consistency, even though even though it may take more time to note down each each transaction. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if if maybe you're running a high volume restaurant where there's a huge crowd of people and like the items fly off the shelves like every two minutes or every two seconds, there's a huge crowd of people. Then you can't really afford to wait, and uh, it's okay if one or two transactions doesn't get uh, noted. You know, if, if if each item someone's buying is worth five rupees, ten rupees, yeah, you, you may lose you may lose that amount of data, but it's okay. Like we, we need to make sure more customers are served. Otherwise, we lose even more money. So in this case, we have to uh, we, we should choose availability in this case. Uh, as in, uh, we can copy all the data later. It's okay. So yeah, that's this is basically the this is the trade-off. Actually, this is the trade-off that. Uh, I have had arguments about in my team that many other teams have argued about when discussing, you know, uh, how to store how to store a customer's data and basically how to architect their application. And if if you ever work if you ever work in application development, you will also have these arguments uh, every day. Uh, it, it's it's this is like a unknown So yeah, uh, any any questions? Cool. Cool. So, uh, just give me a second. Okay. So, uh, now our, our shop is doing pretty well. Like, we've uh, we've increased the number of customers like by 10x. Like a shop is very popular, a lot of people are coming, right? And uh, it's 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 getting irritating to kind of uh, keep one notebook to note everything down. So uh, and and like basically we're not able to deal with these these many customers. So what what do we do now? Yeah, we can uh, we can employ. We can employ more people, right? So we have we have three cash registers now, and each person has their own notepad, right? 
but uh, now now there's one problem so i want to see uh, i want to see all i want to see all transactions uh, only for apples what what do i like where do i go this is an issue i i don't know i don't know which transaction is in which notebook like i am just sending i am just telling all my customers just go to any one of these counters like just uh, just give your bill over there and go so i i need some way to kind of okay so my requirement now is that uh, like because i have to I have to renew my stock right i want to i want to know like i want to know all the transactions for broccoli all for apple and all for cherry like and i want to know this fast yeah sorry yeah that actually is something we can do so what i can what one thing i can do is uh, i i can keep each i can keep one one guy just for uh, cherry one guy just for apples one person just for broccoli and uh, let, let let's assume that uh, i know this is little uh, contrived example so let's just assume that a customer is going to buy one two at a time for this example okay so i'll have different counters for for each thing but uh, we we still we still need our data to be uh, uh, be secure like each person still has only one notebook one more will be given to them sorry one more notepad will be like given to them so that or else you can do one more thing each person can be given three notepads like they can uh, do for each fruit they can like keep it vegetables if i have 50 fruits with 50 notebooks <laughs> yeah, fifty fruits, fifty notebooks. Yeah, one, one more question. What do we do if we have uh, fifty fruits? We have three fruits here. So you can have global notebooks. Global, but then we go back to our first problem. Yeah, there is a problem. Global notebooks. Yeah, yeah. 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 No one wrote it. One notebook for vegetables. One notebook for fruits. Okay, so one for all fruits. All fruits and one for vegetables. Okay. Yeah, we can keep. Uh, we we enter the data alphabetically so that we'll keep some separate pages for A, B, C, so A, B, C, and then one for B. Separate pages is fine. Like, okay, my problem is with like, so we have we have only three employees. We have three employees. We have uh, we have fifty items. So yeah, I mean, you gave us this fruits, fruits in one, vegetables in another, uh, chips in one more, something like that, right? Or or maybe or maybe what we can do is uh, or we can say all yellow items go to this guy, all uh, blue items go to this guy. We can divide by color. Maybe that that is completely arbitrary, right? So. Uh, Yeah. So basically, this is this is another concept called uh, sharding. So sharding means uh, sharding means dividing dividing based on some criteria. It can be anything. It can be color, or it can be for single fruit also. It can be alphabetical, anything. But one okay. Uh, what what is the limitation of this? You have so many books. Uh, yeah, no, I, I'm saying like limitation of dividing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we have so that's true. We have too many books now. Customers get. I mean, customer. Why does he customer? As a customer, right? Yeah, rule of the game is not to open that. Yeah, if, if one customer has multiple items, they have to go to each each notebook. That's that's one that's one disadvantage. So one thing you have to consider, one thing you have to consider in sharding is. Or basically, when dividing items like this, is you should make sure that this also aligns with what your customers do. Like, if most of your customers either buy fruits or most of your customers either buy vegetables, then it's better to divide fruits in one counter, vegetables in one counter. Like, dividing by color will not be a great, uh, will not be a great. Yes, exactly. That's another great point. So. What if uh, I mean, 
not many people buy broccoli, but a lot of people buy apples. Maybe our sales of apples will be like we will sell thousand apples in one day, but we will only sell like ten pieces of broccoli. That way, it's not fair. It's not fair to the middle fellow, right? So that's another thing we have to keep in mind. We have to we have to distribute we have to distribute these uh, these counters in such a way that the orders like each person has the same amount of work. We don't want to give one person extra work uh, for the same amount of pay, right? So yeah, that's that's one thing I have to consider when uh, Yeah, but I think one question we still had is we still uh, one of these notebooks might catch on like one of these computers their notebooks might catch on fire. Right? How do we how do we solve for this? Copy. Yeah, copy. I mean, we can we can just go back to our earlier solution. Right? Uh, we still need copies. We we can just give we can just give each person a separate copy. But uh, we we don't have we don't have that we can't buy so many notebooks we like these we're, we're buying now we we moved from one we started with one notebook now we have six notebooks so this is like six times six times the cost I know our store is big but still six times the cost so uh, okay I'll I still want to keep uh, okay fine I'll I'll just give you one assumption now you can assume our notebooks are are quite fat okay. Like uh, our notebooks are quite fat. That that's fine. It 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 just the majority of the cost goes in like the binding or whatever. But the notebooks are quite fat. So how can we? We still need copies, but we don't want to buy six notebooks. We want to keep just these three notebooks. But the notebooks have a lot of pages. That's fine. Uh, is there any way we can we can protect we can protect ourselves from data loss? But with with just these three notebooks and with these three compass. You can store Jerry's information in Apple's Yeah, we can we can store cherries in Apple's also. But yeah, what will you do with the broccoli? Yeah. Sure. Uh, and any any other Yeah so uh over to yeah, so yeah, Bharat was right. Basically, uh, fine. So we can we we can do it like this, right? We can we can say uh, for the first for the first counter, we'll say your main your main fruit is cherries, but uh, from from the reverse side of your notebook, you also note down transactions for broccoli, right? So now e each person. Uh, has a front side of the notebook and a back side of the notebook. In the back side of the notebook, they note down uh, they note down transactions for another another fruit or another. Fruit. So now now what will happen is we still have only three notebooks, but even even if the first one catches on fire, you can see we still have all our all our data for apples. We have all our data for broccoli. We have all our data for cherries in just these two notebooks. Yeah, so uh, any any like. Any any problems you see here with this? If two books are one is one book is gone. Yeah, if yeah, one thing is if if two books are gone, then then one we can't do it. One one shoot's data will be lost. Right. This is still better than earlier. Earlier, if two books were lost, two fruits data would be lost. Now, two books are lost, just one is lost. Right. And. Uh, we still have the same problems as before. Like, uh, we still have to copy. We have to still copy data from one notebook to the other. That's that's again we get to that problem of consistency versus availability. We will have to choose how to copy how to copy the data, right? But but this way, but this way we can we can kind of optimize. We can have less notebooks while still having the same. Like if you see here, okay, what is the what is the fault tolerance over here? For this example, what is the fault tolerance? One. one. Yes. So fault tolerance is one. Right? If we can afford to lose maximum of one notebook. So what was the what is the fault tolerance in, in this case? Okay, all yeah. So the 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 question itself was was incorrect. What is the fault tolerance per per fruit? One, one, right? So yeah, we, per fruit we can afford to use just one notebook. 
even but but yeah even for this one even for this one the poor fruit fall tolerance is also one but lesser books yeah so we saved we saved uh, note we saved note three notebooks like for free right so that profit goes to us so uh, yeah this is uh, this is another way where like maybe for three notebooks the cost savings will not be that much but say if you had 1000 notebooks and you save 500 You can imagine uh, that would be quite considerable, right? Because that would move the regular person to that. Cool. So, uh, yeah. So now I want to talk about like now I want to come back to the real world. And actually, that was also the real world, right? If you're living 50 years ago, you could have used the same concepts on notebooks. So now I want to come to the real world, right? So say say you're using uh, Okay, let's let's uh, let's say you're ordering you're ordering food from Swiggy, right? How 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 can you apply? How can like how do you think you can apply the same thing uh, for for real world apps? So Swiggy gets maybe billions of orders per day, right? But uh, they they can't run everything on just one single computer, right? So how how do you think how how do you do? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, one one good option is area wise. So so this is sharding, right? Instead of the so area wise sharding, each each area gets its own its own data store, right? And uh, one more thing, I mean, if we are going to say area wise example, say uh, people who are uh, like the orders for Indra Nagar can also be noted as on the same data store as the orders for Jaynagar, right? So this is. So this is the same example of you know having having kind of that that back page copy, and uh, in, in the real world, what happens is uh, databases will they not just have they, so there won't just be three fruits, there'll be hundreds of fruits, and there won't just uh, millions in fact, and it won't just be one it won't just be one copy on another copy. Maybe you can ask the second fellow to. To handle both for cherries and broccoli as well as apples. His main, his main uh, fruit will be apples, but you know also handle these other two three fruits on the side. Right? This, this I know it doesn't work very well with humans, but if we come to the world of computers, we can kind of assign uh, we can assign larger numbers, right? But the but all, the problems I discussed with consistency and availability, they they are still there, like in the application we use. So. For example, uh, when you're using the Swiggy app, right? When you click on a restaurant and it opens and opens up to the menu, like how how fast how fast is that? Depends on your internet. Yeah. Okay. If I'm comparing it to uh, like the final part where you make the payment and wait for the confirmation, which which one is slower? Opening opening a restaurant. And seeing the menu or finishing a payment, <laughs> uh, that's slower, right? Yeah. 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 So, uh, any ideas why that that is slower? It's more critical. Yes. So, for for that part of the application, they have chosen to optimize for consistency. Right. They want to make sure that that is critical data. Making your payment, they want to make sure that if you made payment, it should be. It should be. Yeah, it should be like. It should be noted down, and the data should not be lost. Whereas, like, if you're just opening a restaurant and looking at a menu, it, it's okay. Like, uh, maybe sometimes uh, that page doesn't load. Sometimes it goes down. It, it's fine. That's not a. That's not a super critical part. So over there, the option is for availability. So you never just have like hundred hundred users. I mean, I mean, you expect to have you know thousands, millions, maybe billions of users. So you can't uh, 
Okay, uh, you, have everyone knows like does everyone know clients over like I mean okay basically every time every time you make an order or when you use an app or anything uh, from your phone that request goes to some computer or some server that the company is running right so that company cannot just rely on one server they what normally happens is that they have multiple. There are hundreds, maybe hundreds of servers, and your request can go to either one of them. Like in this case, your request, if I'm looking at Swiggy, it can be to get the menu items. That be one request, and then the menu data comes from one of the servers. So each server is like one of those uh, cash counter fillers, right? So each, just uh, like a little bit. Yeah, uh, each each person over there is is one server. Like that's the that's the computer which actually does the work of taking your request and giving you back something. And each notepad here can be thought of as a, a database, right? So what normally happens is for, for smaller applications, if you have only thousands of users, you can still have just one database, it's okay. Right? Like you, you don't need to have multiple databases, one database will handle all thousand of your users. And uh, similar to having similar to having a notebook copy, uh, in the real world, every time there's a database, there is always a backup database. So how data is transferred from the main database to the backup database is similar to what we explained. Either either each every time you make an entry in one, it waits until the entry is made to the other database, and only then says, okay, you can enter more data now, or it copies like in the background. It'll be like, yeah, I'll copy the data eventually. But this database you can add you can add how much ever data you want more. And uh, another thing is another thing is sharded databases. So this is this is similar to how you kept each counter for each different fruit. Right? So like uh, so since we're talking about Swiggy only, I'll take the example Swiggy only. You can you can keep one database for uh, gen one If, if I want to know, like, 
I want to see information for order number 134. I want to know which database that order is for. How will I know? Okay, I, I sent everyone at random. So how will I know which database that's for? Sorry? Yeah, but again, I, need, I, I, only have, I only have these three databases. I, I want I want it to be random because when I do randomly it gets in the new distributed. But I still want to know where it's gone. Maybe we can use hashing. Hashing? Yeah. Hashing how? Like the hash key to decide which database to go into. Yes. So yeah, that's and that's actually what uh, what we use uh, and what most people use in real world applications. It's called hashing. But I'll be in simple terms. I, I can just say if the order number ends with 1, 3, or 5, send them to database 1. If the order number ends with 2, 4, or 6, send them to database 2. And if it ends with the remaining numbers, send them to database 3. So this is random because the order numbers keep incrementing one by one, right? So it will be evenly distributed. But I know if I, if I want information for order number 1, 3, 5, I know that everything with n digit 5 will be in database 2. So I'll just put that. So yeah, that, that's a concept called uh, consistent hashing. Means we do it at random, but it's all but the same order will always be sent to the same database, even though among multiple orders it is random. So um, yeah, uh, yeah. So I think uh, that was. Hey everyone, thanks for listening to my talk. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions or want to know more, feel free to reach out to me on the socials mentioned here. And I'll see you in the next one.